Sometimes I just think I'm, I'm just a woman. I mean, I'm just titled with my label being Aboriginal. Sometimes I don't like being Aboriginal and being an Aboriginal woman because it's hard. Um, but generally, I'm very, very proud of being an Aboriginal woman. Growing up in Kaunyama has been an ideal childhood. Weekends, I'd go fishing and camping with my mom and my aunties and turtle hunting, go walk about in the bush. I learned a lot about myself and my identity um, as an Indigenous person. Mama, are you going to come in here and help me? I told her it's important for you to learn both sides, not just one side. You learn white men ways and you bring them back in your own community and you're going to learn your ways as well. Get him, dog! It's very isolated here, like it's over 600 k's to the nearest city and being isolated in that and close to your culture, the mainstream and community living is two different worlds. Yeah, there was two worlds for me because in Kaunyama I had my sense of place. When I went out to mainstream Australia, I really had no place. Pink pizza cake. In a white Australia, there are a lot of people who have their stereotypical views of what an Aboriginal should be. Off the notch comments are based on that we get too much money, we, we have a lot of problems and we should take more responsibility. And I agree with a lot part of the responsibility, but a lot of these people base their facts on what they see on TV and they don't really understand the historical um, traumas and the problems that a lot of the communities are facing in this day and age. Psychological traumas of the, of the past and the, and the effects of colonisation, the dispossession of land and, and being raped. The women being raped and having half-caste kids who don't belong. Go, ah, 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 you know, ah. Nah, you gotta dance. I tell you now, it just, it's, it's sad when you can't dance to your own tradition. You wanna come? Well, come on, let's go. A lot of the boys from my, my age group have gotten in, in prison, like I've gotten in trouble with the law and have been incarcerated. I mean, a few for rape, um, a few for common assault and murder. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, <laughs> I can buy you one pin. <laughs> I chose to do criminology because I wanted to understand the characteristics of criminal behaviour. And I wondered why so many people in the community went to prison and why their ambition was to go to prison and why they get so angry and when they get angry it's inevitable that they will get locked up and they will get imprisoned and I thought I've got to do something. You mean overly you. <laughs> My main motivation in a lot of in these communities is the children because they are our next generation. What she's trying to do in the community here is she, she always says it, she has a vision, like to raise the, the kids' level of education up to career level and just to show the kids simply just that there's another world outside of the community. Who want to travel overseas like me? Me! What country you want to go to? Um, America. I know as a child here there were certain people in my life when I was a kid telling me that, oh, you know, you're doing so well, keep it up, and just giving me that little bit of encouragement has taken me a long way in my life. All right, who here got a uniform? Put your hand up, please. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, yeah. ten, eleven. My daughter comes home talking about traveling the world and going to Tulsa, Oklahoma, doing a uni there. And so, yeah, that's, that's great on Tanya's part to open the world up to my daughter is, is in a short period of time. That's, that's good. Education has made a big difference to my life. I've had the opportunity to travel the world. I've had the opportunity to sit and have a conversation with the Prime Minister of Australia, to represent Australia at the United Nations in New York. Edu education is just vital. Happy birthday to you. The road that she had to travel down was a, was a middle road where you know, she, she was on a juggling act, and, and let's face it, she, she like myself, is, is an half-caste, and we were neither really accepted by both societies. It's been very hard for me because my dad's white and my mum's black, yes. I've been up against the, 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 the comments of, oh, 
what are you trying to prove? Are you just nothing but a show pony or you're nothing, you want to just be white or, you know, you're a try hard white woman um, just because I've gone out and get an education and I'm speaking up. You now my people have always been told, oh, you can't do that. You can't amount to anything. You can't do this. You're black. You can't do that. And when they see other indigenous people who, who stand up above that and get up there, their automatic reaction is to pull them down. They can't amount to anything because they're black. And this is what I want to change now. You never see a lot of old people walk around with a bush cover like this. Yeah. Come on, let's go. We all a kid, we the next generation, let's go. I want my people, you know, to be happy, to be healthy, to be proud of who they are. Because I'm sure proud of being Aboriginal. I'm very proud of being Aboriginal. When we are there talking to ourselves, we think she may turn this place around. She's going to be uh, our voice, Cockleberry.